Hello friend, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, I am going to ask you a question on static timing analysis. Let us assume that the given flip-flop to flip-flop path is a critical path in the design. And it has two combination logics, combination logic 1 and combination logic 2. And the very important thing about this uh, critical path is only one bit is passed from combination logic 1 to combination logic 2. Now let me tell you the propagation delays involved in the design. This is TCQ which is clock to Q delay of both the flip flops and which is 1 nanosecond. TCL1 is a combination logic delay of combination logic 1 which is 10 nanosecond. TCL2 is propagation delay of uh, this combination logic 2 which is also 10 nanosecond. TSU is a setup time of both the flip flops which is 1 nanosecond. Now you have to answer me two questions. Question number one is what is the minimum time period and maximum operating frequency of the design? Question number two is how will you make this circuit work at less than 15 nanosecond time period? Before going into the design let me tell you few assumptions that you have to consider. All the other inputs to combination logic 1 and combination logic 2 are coming after 1 nanosecond of the clock edge and their propagation delay inside combination logic 1 and combination logic 2 is also minimal that is equal to 1 nanosecond. Let me explain. Other inputs means these inputs which are not on the critical path and these two inputs are coming after 1 nanosecond. Let us assume that they are coming directly from the output of flip flops. And inside these combination logics, they are impacting the output of combination logics after 1 nanosecond. Their propagation delay to the output is 1 nanosecond. And the second assumption is we cannot change the combination logics, combination logic 1 and combination logic 2. Third assumption is area is not a big issue, only timing is important. And the last assumption is consider the delay of discrete components like logic gates, for example, or and etc and maxis is 1 nanosecond. Friends, you can think of this answer, otherwise I will explain it. Ok, let me explain you the answer. I have rearranged a little bit. To calculate T minimum, that is minimum time period where this circuit can operate is equal to TCQ of this flip-flop plus combination logic delay between the flip-flops plus setup time of flip-flop 2. Those who does not know from where this equation is coming, I have created a separate video and I will give its link in the description and its link will also appear in the top right corner of the video. You can go through it. TCQ is 1 nanosecond. TCL1 plus TCL2 is 10 and 10 nanosecond and T setup of flip flop 2 is also 1 nanosecond. So the minimum time period where it can operate is 22 nanosecond. From here you can easily calculate maximum operating frequency of the design. Maximum operating frequency is equal to 1 by T minimum and T minimum is 22 nanosecond so it is 1 by 22 nanosecond. So from here you can calculate it will become 45.45 megahertz. So with this question number 1 is complete. Now let us come to the solution of question number 2. Friend, to resolve this type of problem, I am using technique named combination logic duplication. So what I mean by that is, I am repeating this combination logic 2. As I know, only one bit is passing from combination logic 1 to combination logic 2. So that one bit can take only two values, either 0 or 1. So input to combination logic 2, I am feeding 0. And input to combination logic 2, I am feeding 1. Now I don't need to wait the output of combination logic 1. I can directly compute the output of combination logic 2. So that means we can say that combination logic 1 and combination logic 2, both are working in parallel. When combination logic 1 is calculating its output value, which is one weight, combination logic 2 is also evaluating its output. 
So both the combination logic two outputs I am feeding to a mux and delay of mux I know it is one nanosecond as per our assumption. The output of combination logic one I am feeding to this mux slack line. Depending on the output of combination logic one, I will select one of the input to this mux. Friends, as both the combination logics, combination logic one and combination logic two, are working in parallel, let us recalculate the t minimum uh, of this path. T minimum of this path will be equal to T C Q of this flip flop plus T C L one plus T max plus T setup of flip flop two. T C Q is one nanosecond. T C L one is ten nanosecond. Delay of max is one nanosecond, and setup time of flip flop two is one nanosecond. Adding up all will give you thirty nanosecond. Now my new circuit can work at thirty nanosecond instead of thirty two nanosecond. Friends, one very important thing that I want to mention here: the other input that are coming to combination logic one and combination logic two, they do not have any impact on the critical path because. Because I am considering that they are directly coming from the output of flip flop, so their TCQ is one nanosecond only, and inside their impact is only taking one nanosecond as per our assumption. Otherwise, these three paths would be our dominating critical paths, and our new operating frequency will be calculated as per these three paths. Friends, now I have chosen a question for you to solve. So this is a question. I have written the combination delays inside the blocks only, which are independent of inputs this time. I mean, for this input, this will be ten nanosecond only, and for this input, this will be ten nanosecond only. Unlike our previous question that I explained to you, and T C Q and T setup I have given here, and you have to solve these two questions. You can write your answer in the comment section. I will reply there only if it is correct or not. With this, I am going to end this episode. Hope all of you would have enjoyed this session. Thank you so much for watching.